Would you like to make a bit more money? Of course you would. I'm Rob B, he's Rob D, and we're from Property Hub. Yep, this video could save you a fortune. We're gonna give you some really quick and easy ways to squeeze more profit out of your portfolio. Okay, first on our list is reviewing your mortgage product. If your fixed term has come to an end and you're on a standard variable rate, then you're almost certainly paying too much. If you're still on a fixed rate, then all you need to do now is note down the date that that ends and make a note for a couple of months beforehand to start talking to your mortgage broker. That way you can be prepared with a new product by the time that one ends so you don't spend any time paying more than you need to. For most property investors, your mortgage is your biggest expense. So even if you can just shave a little bit off, spending the time doing that could save you a lot of money. Number two on our list is review your rent. So when was the last time you looked at your rent or even raised it? The market may have moved on. Don't just assume it hasn't. It's easy to check. Go on Rightmove, put in a postcode of your property and look at comparables in the area and see what like-for-like -like properties are renting for. It may be time to increase your rent. Now, you may have a letting agent and think, oh, that's their job, but don't just assume they're doing it. They may be after an easy life and just keeping rents a little bit lower to get it left quickly. Have a look double check and make sure that you are at market levels. Now, you may choose not to raise it because you've got a great tenant and that's okay, but at least you know and at least you've got the option. Third on our list is looking into allowing pets. According to the latest stats, only 17% of rental properties allow pets, which means pet owners have very limited options when they're looking for somewhere to rent and accordingly will be willing to pay more. Yes, pets can cause damage, and these days you can't increase the deposit to cover it. So you'll need to increase the rent by the amount of damage that you expect there to be, plus a little bit extra to boost your profit. And remember, lots of landlords have a blanket ban on all pets. So if you just don't do that and you're open to having a conversation, you might find someone with a very small animal or one in a cage that's not gonna cause any damage at all, yet you can still charge a bit extra. Fourth on our list is check your insurance. So if you take out insurance, and most landlords do, then if you've just been accepting the regular rate, then you might wanna have a shop around because often the best deals on insurance are done in the beginning. And then insurance companies like to make their money later on. So by shopping around, you could save yourself a significant number. Also, sneaky extra tip here is check the rebuild value you've put in for your insurance. Now, most people end up putting what the property is worth for the rebuild value, but to rebuild your property in most circumstances is less than what the property is worth. And also check that each year your insurance company hasn't automatically increased that number as well, which will increase your costs. So whether you're taking insurance out for the first time or you're renewing, make sure you've got your rebuild value correct. Number five, get an inventory done so you're not paying for any damage that you shouldn't be. If a tenant is damaging the property and you're ending up paying for it, then that is hurting your returns. The way to avoid that is to get a good inventory done at the start of the tenancy. That way, if there are any disputes over the condition of the property, you'll be able to prove the condition at the start and therefore the adjudicator will find in your favor and you won't end up out of pocket when you shouldn't be. Of course, there will always be wear and tear that you wouldn't expect a tenant to pay for that will have to come out of your pocket. That should be factored into your numbers already, but make sure you don't pay out any more than you have to by getting that inventory done. Number six on our list is make sure you're claiming every tax relief you can. Now the HMRC will make sure they claim all their money, but are you making sure you're getting all the relief you can? Well, double check. Are you claiming all the mileage? Are you claiming for education? Are you claiming for the use of your home office? There's a big list here, but well, here's the great news. We've done the hard work for you. In the description below, we've got a course that you can take for free, which will guide you through property tax, a beginner's guide. And we've also got a link to an article, which gives you a list of all the things you may be able to claim for. So go and check those links out and start saving yourself some money. And finally, number seven, research whether you can turn your property into serviced accommodation or an HMO. Now, this of course is not a decision to be taken lightly. It's not something you can do in 10 minutes, but you can research it and see if it's an option. Serviced accommodation, of course, is renting out a property short term rather than long term, charging a higher rate per night. So if your occupancy is high enough, then you can end up making more money than you would with a single let. An HMO is renting out a property room by room. And again, the combined value of those rooms will be higher than the single let rent. 
Now, both of those options come with higher costs. They come with more intensive management. They come with complication. So it's not something to rush into. They also don't work in every location and there might be restrictions, for example, around your mortgage or your lease that prevent you from doing it. So in the majority of cases, it's not going to make sense, but it's well worth spending 10 minutes looking into it just to see. Because if you do have a property that this would be suitable for, it can give your profits a significant boost. So there's bound to be something in there that leaves you better off than you were at the start of this video. Have we missed anything? Let us know. I'll tell you what you've missed. Subscribe to this channel. I can see you haven't yet. And you, but you're okay. And um, you over there, press that bell.